Hi guys, this is uh, a bit different. This was uh, me and Ellen on holiday in Marathon. Yes, Marathon, right on the beach at Marathon in a friend's beach house. When I say beach house, don't think about Miami beach houses. Think about small little um, very basic chalets, but having the virtue of being literally on the beach. It was great. Anyway, there's something you need to know. If you ever go to Marathon and you know the history of Marathon and what happened there, if you're quiet, you can feel it and you can hear it. It, it, it affects you. And I'm not talking about looking at a, an ancient war memorial or quite what, but there is something there. And for me, when I walk there with my feet in the, uh, in the sea, watching the, uh, the colours in the sand and watching the water come over my toes, there was a story and it was about the invasion a um, thousand, few thousand years ago now um, and what actually happened there and it's as if it still echoes. Trust me, if you're sensitive, you go there, I promise you, you'll feel it anyway. Um, here it is. This is called The Promises of Small Gods and Great Men. See what you make of it. The softness of the colours struck him, barely a moment before the arrow. His last thoughts were not of home, not of glory, not of family, not of she. She who had stitched leather layer on layer in love in hope, in hope against hope against harm across his breast and brow. No, not even she, but the colours. The colours living a double pebble life, breathing, exhaling, darkening, lightening. Colours wet, stark and striking, shifting with each gentle swash of the waves at the shore. Colours dry paling into pastel shades, settling still as the waters retreated before the feet of the landward foe. Today, men would meet on this margin, would mirror the war of these worlds, might against main, sea, land. Zeus, Poseidon, death, life, Persian, Athenian. No god could claim complete victory, and vanquish one brother or another, could ever cut eternity's cord and consign the sibling rival to time, to history, to memory, for they were, are, all forever shackled to a present tense, whose chains not even the immortal may loose. Gods who may never win must only ever lose, and bored to a death that won't take them, be condemned to play out their vacuous and thinly veiled self-delusions of a glory that for them can never be upon a mortal stage, whispering their whims, their puppeteer prompts and prophecies into the vain ears of human hearts and dreams. He had come riding high on this hope and a rising tide of Persian expectation, with security in his deity's invincibility. Fair wind and weather had found and filled their sails, driven and drawn them inexorably to their destiny, their destination. Marathon. There would lie victory, ripe fruit for the picking. There there lay their glory, nothing more than easy plucking. He couldn't wait, wouldn't wait, for glory is seldom shared and diminished, divided. Set his foot, flexed a spring to the prow as it sank its snarl, keel deep into the fresh of flesh of Greece, and sprang, unleashing all his coiled fear and fury like fire into the third of the four elements. Then, in that slowest of split seconds, the colours cut through his war-hardened carapace like jewels, like the spoils he would now never see about her neck, adorn her breast as the arrow point stole his sight 
and sliced him soul from spirit. Riven of its kernel, the husk of him sailed on in the winnowing breeze of the battle, then beached itself as heavy and empty as the hollow promises of small gods and great men. And the colours turned and ran crimson, as would three thousand Persians, over what was once him. On Marathon Beach, my eye was taken too, for every other colour there are crimson pebbles too.